I've got no heating in my own home, a newborn baby and an irate wife. Can I get this pretty big job done within regulations, avoiding divorce so we can be a warm, happy family again? Watch all of this video to find out, guys. And thanks to HelloFresh for fueling me throughout this job. Let's go. My wife loves me. We just had a newborn baby. And here I am putting a borehole in just down here, planning to put a swimming pool in just down here. But before that, I've got to move our oil tank. The oil tank being moved is a very, very big part of the whole job because it's just in the way. The whole plan for this bit here is going to be nice patio area that I'm going to fit myself. And the idea being that people can sit out here, me and my little boy, after he's had a little swim and that, we can sit out in the sun and enjoy some time together with the lovely missus. The old tank is now empty, which means it's all cocked up at one end, which means we've got no heating in the house at the moment. So I now need to plan and install our new bunded oil tank that I got from Carberry Tanks. So here's my new Carberry Plastic 650 litre oil tank. What an absolute beast. I've gone for 650 litres because with my solar panels and also with my lovely wood burner, that keeps my house warm and wood is free. So here is where we're gonna be installing the tank. Now we have to be 1.8 meters away from an opening, so that's that there. But also we need to be 1.8 meters from non-fire rated eaves, which we are all the way from down there. This is all cement, so that's fire rated, that's fine. But we also need to be from non-fire rated boundary. The way we get around this is to actually make this fire rated to an hour. And we do that by installing cement board that will give that a one hour time. So if everything blows up here and there's a big fire, we know there's an hour before it burns down this particular section of fence and then next door's property. After that, I need to think about the plinth that I'm gonna be installing the tank on. Now, do not start trying to install these tanks on a oh, couple of patio slabs and stuff like that. Best thing you can do is install a proper concrete plinth, just get that down nicely, but also make sure that you follow the regs for that. So the regs for a plinth, there has to be a 30 centimeter overhang on every side of the tank. You've got to have a depth that will adequately support the weight of the tank. Now, normally that would probably be about 100 mil, but what I'm gonna do is put 150 mil in, which is six inches. Uh, well, I hope so anyway, if I've done my calculations correctly, um, and then that should be enough for me to have a lovely tank that's installed within regs, um, that's nice and safe and isn't gonna cause a problem. I mean, the tank is bunded anyway, so you don't have to 100% worry about it leaking everywhere because it's gonna leak into itself. But we'll have a look at that in more detail later on in the video. Once all that's done, there's gonna be some magic because I'll be installing a Tiger Loop on this system to make it a two pipe system. And I'll be talking about how we do that and why it's a good idea later on in this video. So don't go anywhere. Let me take 48 seconds to tell you that you can learn plumbing online in a fully structured course and curriculum designed by me from the comfort of your home or shed in your own time to improve your basic plumbing skills and knowledge. From the basics of how to use basic plumbing tools, how to turn the water off, how to join and bend copper pipe and waste pipe to a fun skills test where you'll make your own test rig, which trainees and apprentices do at MBQ level. There's even a section on the top five plumbing jobs that I'll teach you along the way. You can ask questions in the discussion panel next to each lesson, plus get access to the Plumbing Essentials community where you can post pictures of your work and talk about the course and learn from your peers. So if you're a young person looking to get into the industry, an apprentice who wants to brush up their skills, a DIY interested in plumbing, or even a handyman looking to add plumbing to their services, then look no further than learnplumbingonline.com with yours truly from Plumber Parts. Anyway, back to the video. First thing to do was to clear out all the old detritus that had built up in the corner near the house over the last few years. Now, I really want to drill into you the regulations that do exist for oil tanks and there's good reason for it. I mean, look at this one here and also look at this one here. It's very important they have a good base. So just follow the myriad different regulations that seem to change on a daily basis and often have no foundation within reality whatsoever. Regardless of that, if you're not happy about doing this work, then get an Off-Tech qualified engineer to come in to do it for you and make sure when they've done it that you get the required forms to sign it off to make sure your house insurance is still covered. My good mate Gavin will be coming in to sign this off and also help me service my boiler over the next few days. So we've got a nice area cleared out. I just want to explain to you the soil conditions um, and what we're going to be doing here to get this all going. So let's spin the camera around. This is the area that we're going to be installing our plinth. I'm making it doubly long and we're going to sit the tank just in the middle of there. Some of you may go, oh, that's just soil there. It's not. There is 
hardcore all the way along under here that we had installed for when we did this patio. Also this patio is obviously massively hardcore, cemented and all the rest of it. And also the kickboards along the back here are all concrete and I'm never going to want to lift those out. I've got to basically get all this lot so it's all shuttered properly. Then we're going to damp proof membrane this, lap up the sides as well and then we'll be ready to start getting our mix and getting it poured. Right then guys, so here we are. We got our nice little bear sorted out. So now we've got that prepared, before I pull the plinth through and stuff like that, I need to make sure that our boundary here is fire rated. Oh my God guys, Ted has just started feeling himself. The way I usually do that is to use cement board. Make sure that when you buy your cement board, the type that it is, make sure that it is A rated, or this, this particular board is A rated, uh, which means it's gonna last absolutely ages. In the case that my oil tank sets on fire and explodes, all of my kitchen will be destroyed. The back of the house will be destroyed. Most of this patio will be destroyed, but don't worry, this fence will still be here. And then that will be compliant to the regulations that we have. Uh, I will also pull this ivy off, which is a, Dipping nightmare. So just screw this on as you would any board. Don't know what I'm gonna do with those wires that are in the way. Gonna have to figure that one out later. Right then gang, so here we are. It's rained like mad. We got water absolutely everywhere, but we're ready to do this job. Couple of things to note, this stuff here is completely water resistant, which is why I often use it on shower walls as well. And you can paint it because it looks absolutely revolting at the moment, but I'm gonna wait for my wife to choose what color she wants it to be. Now, what I need to do is just measure out my base, get myself a load of sand and cement and get mixing in my nice little mixer here. I think I bought this little beast on Amazon, all right? I'll link to it below, but this mixer is, it's just a godsend. It's not a proper bell mix, so it doesn't, you know, it's not a big old one you get on site, but for like little house jobs like this, it's absolutely perfect. Hola, I'm here for cement and sand. Dust and sand, senor. <laughs> that is gonna be filled up in literally one click of my finger. Look at that, lovely. 36 bags. Now you might be wondering, why don't I just buy a half ton bag? It's because the time it takes me to shovel it out of that wheelbarrow, unshovel it into my cement mixer, and then put it into this, it would just take me absolutely ages. So I've just got to get on with it now, guys. Put my watch on, get that workout going, and burn some calories. Don't worry, it's Friday. By the time I'm done, I'm gonna have a couple of beers. I bought this little mini truck off Amazon. I'll definitely leave a link to this because that's got three bags of 25 kilo sand in there and then a bag of dust on top as well at 25 kegs. And I'm still pulling that about. So that's absolutely bloody class, okay? In all the mixes that I do, I'm popping some mortar plasticizer in there, mainly because it makes you have a much nicer mix, but also it gives you time. As you can see, it's just a bit, looks like a pint of Guinness in there at the moment. But it gives you time when it comes to mixing this up. Now guys, look, if I was on site, I would have probably a couple of lads running that while one person just did all the mixing but I'm not on site, I'm on my own, with a newborn baby crying his head off in there at the moment, all right? So please guys, just give me, you know, give me the, give me the light of day. <laughs> Recording this a few days later, I can tell you now my back is absolutely battered. Usually what I do here is actually level off all the pieces of wood properly. Then I can just fill up the cement to the top of the wood shuttering, smooth off with a nice long beam, and that makes it level. In this case, that was quite difficult to do because it was six inch deep, and I do not want to be doing a base like that. I'd still be doing it now, guys. 100 mil would be perfectly fine. The best way is to get yourself a properly nice big fat float, start waiting for it to go off, and then use two or three spirit levels to smooth it out all nicely. Fortunately, that plasticizer gives us ages to get this nice and level. Level, and this took pretty much all day and well into the evening. Right, whilst all that sets, I'm gonna get ready to put the oil tank on sometime hopefully tomorrow. I'm now gonna get around to making a bit of dinner. Now this is a chance for me to tell you about HelloFresh. I'm not the world's best cook ever. My wife would attest for that. But my wife is possibly one of the best chefs, I'm gonna call her a chef, I've ever met. 
And a lot of you probably know that we've just had a baby and I'm doing everything I possibly can around making videos and everything to make life a lot easier for Emily. And I've been blown away by the experience I've had of cooking stuff for HelloFresh. Last night I did some pork rice bowl. Emily was like, whoa, you're getting good at this. These guys take the hassle out of that evening meal. We don't have the extra stress after a day at work or looking after Teddy, planning dinner. It's super convenient. I just go online and choose from the vast array of meals and they're delivered straight to my door and there's no commitments. And I can customize each week's boxes. And the food quality, I can tell you, is absolutely gorgeous. And you can enjoy HelloFresh yourself by getting 60% plus 20% off the next two months and free gifts. And this is valid in Ireland too. Just use the discount account that I've put in the description box below at the end of this video. Every day just turns up in a big old bag like that. You can just divide them out, shove them. All I need to do is read the instructions, which a lot of you in Plumber Parts land know I really struggle with, but they're so clear and easy to follow. So if you struggle to eat healthy, and believe me, that's very difficult when you've got a newborn baby, you just end up eating random bits of chocolate and stuff like that. Or if you just want to get into cooking and you just want to eat healthy at the end of a hard day at work, then please do check out HelloFresh by using the link below. I can tell you now, just as Ted is about to kick off, this is absolutely delicious. Ted, even Ted wants some and he can't even eat yet. <laughs> We're now going to fast forward to the next day where we carry on installing this beautiful oil tank. Ah, what a beautiful day it is. And can you believe it? We haven't had one cat print on here. My God. So then guys, another day, another dollar. We're out here at the moment. Everything's gone off bloody rock hard. All right, I'm ready to knock off all the sides uh, and then just give every, all those sort of corners just a nice sort of run off as well. So they don't, they're not like hard. So let's get that done. And then you can watch me connect up this oil tank, especially the outlets that are really, really important. Don't want to get that stuff wrong. Make this oil boiler installation into a two pipe system. It's going to be bloody great, guys. Don't go anywhere, I'll tell me. That's it. All right. Whew. All right, keep going. Right then gang, so really, really happy with how this installs going at the moment. Got a lovely little gap going around of 30 centimeters, all within regs, a nice deep base as well. And we've got that side bit of that flammable boundary up to an hour of fire protection. We're 1.8 meters away from any openings or any flue outlets. We're miles from any flue outlets actually. Fortunately, Carberry tanks send everything out with the tank for us to connect it up to 10 mil, which is the standard oil line size in the UK. So it's very, very easy for us to do just to follow the instructions and do this job properly, I've already ordered myself 600 litres of oil. So let's get on with it. So that means left hand thread. To prep this piece, just get your PTFE tape that they've supplied very nicely. Don't you just love fresh PTFE tape? So just get that in there now. You really have to take quite a lot of consideration doing this because we don't want this to leak when Mr. Oil Tank Man turns up, do we? Now we've got some held tight. This is a special jointing compound that goes solid. Make sure that thread's completely clean. I'll just pop a little bit on here as well. Just at the back, okay? And then that'll catch in a sec. And we're going in. Then just get a load on here as well. This is a very important part of the job, guys. And you might as well use all of what's supplied. Doesn't matter if it starts splodging everywhere. That should be perfect. And then we just tie it up into here, like that. Keep on winding, don't stop. So this also acts as our valves. So we've got a little ball valve in there, but we've also got a small filter in here as well. So if I just pop this apart for you, you can see what I'm on about. These filters generally need cleaning every time the boiler is serviced but for some weird reason, I never see anyone do it. And uh, a lot of oil boiler services tend to happen with someone not even taking the combustion chamber flight off. So look, there we go, we've got a nice little filter in there, okay? Generally, you should leave quite a nice gap on the bottom of these as well, but that's not always possible. So if you can leave it so whoever works on it can get a nice adjustable under here and then have the room to pull that down, that's generally okay. So we've got a little rubber seal in there, so that'll always seal up. All right, get this tightened up and on. and then shut the valve, the most important bit for now. 
Right, so we've got some oil line here, and now we're gonna run it round to there. Tiger loop's gonna go in there, fire valve, and then our two other pipes going down to the boiler will pop in down there. Uh, just on the laws of tiger loops and flues, uh, they should not be above a flue. That's like the most important thing. We don't want them above a flue where they can get hot, so it'll be nice and fine just down there. And anyway, this is a balanced flue, and the actual outlet for that is all the way up there. So I've got my pipe clips spaced out around here, so I'm gonna get them in first, just like I normally do with any pipe work, and then we can actually lay our oil line pipe in and get that all connected up, and I'll show you how to do that. Yeah, when you're working on oil line, it's just a good idea just to be sort of careful. You don't want to kink it, and you can't bend oil line when it's inside. Like you can't do 90s and 45s and stuff like that and crossovers when it's inside its plastic sheath because uh, the sheath doesn't allow for us to get sort of accurate connections with our benders. So what you have to do is just sort of lightly work it round. So start this bend back here and just get it round without kinking it. That's the whole, the big mission. In goes our little pipe insert that stops this from being crushed when we tighten it up. And also, I've got some Rocoal oil line seal here. So now you want to do it up, but also push this in. So, looking good, guys. Looking good. Now let's install our Tiger Loop and I'll just quickly tell you why I'm installing it and also how they work. I'm installing because they allow us to have a two pipe installation going to and from our oil pump. It also puts a lot less strain on the oil pump as well. Oil pumps create a vast amount of pressure and only use a tiny fraction of the oil that they're sucking down the line. And that suction itself in rare occasions can cause aeration of the oil. And believe me guys, aeration of an oil is bad. It causes sooting and lowered efficiency of of our fuel burner. So installing a Tiger Loop negates all of these problems, but it also allows us to vent the pipe work going to the burner in the rare occasions that we should run out of oil. Be aware you will need to make configuration changes to the oil pump, namely installing a grub screw and obviously the return hose pipe back to your Tiger Loop. Refer to your oil pump manufacturer, guys. To make good the old, I use X-Pro Sticks All Sealant. This stuff's absolutely wicked. You can use it inside, outside, upside down. It's absolutely quality stuff this is. And I'm using obviously the white colour. You can get this in loads of different colours as well. I'll leave links to this in our Amazon store so you can buy some of it. It's really, really good. Ultra Max, so you can use this for bathroom, UPVC, kitchen and outdoor. Ultra Strong. You can use it even when it's wet. So I can put, if it was out here raining right now, I'd be able to shove that on there. And also it's mold resistant as well. So, so, so if you get a chance, check out X-Pro Sticks All 2-in-1 Sealant. It's absolutely wicked. And I do love the fact that all these sealants now have these little caps on here to keep it, so it doesn't keep going off when it's in the back of the van. Look at that, merges in just nicely with that wall there. Beautiful stuff, guys. So this beautiful tank here, we've got a little clip on here that just stops everything from being easily sort of opened. I'm pretty sure we could put a padlock on that if you wanted to as well. And then you can lift the lid up, expose all the gubbins that you've got underneath. What we can do, we can actually transmit back the level of the oil tank into the house on a little plug. Uh, and that just stops you having the hassle of going outside. Um, and then also it stops you that annoying thing of running out of oil, which is hopefully something we're never gonna do again now that we've got that. Right, so now we can get this installed. So this bit here is just what's gonna be plugged indoors, nice and easy. This bit here is the actual sensor that goes in the top and as you can see that pings a little sort of sonar down and the quicker that bounces back up uh, the higher the level in the tank so that's how these work. So now what I've got to do is plug this into the wall and then I've got a little dot on here and a little dot on here. Uh, get these so they bind together just following the instructions and I'll just screw this back in, pop that on the wall and we're measuring ready for our oil fill delivery. With this sort of work, I'm always very careful not to drop anything down there because <laughs> it's quite easy for you to drop a screw and it just disappears down the bund, never to be seen again. I like carberry tanks because carby tanks actually make, I think, a range of oil tank from 650 litres, like this little one here, up to 6,000 litres. 
But the best thing about them is that they're a family owned company. So I like working for people who are a little bit more proper. This tank's got a 10 year guarantee. They've got 45 years of knowledge of making tanks like this, but also they've got a wide range of products as well. So if they're looking for a certain type of oil tank, if I've got a customer who's looking for a certain type of oil tank, just put them onto Carberry and they're pretty much gonna find what they need. So then guys, there we go, all done. Nicely filled up and back on. The valves on down there, filters all through. Everything's sorted out and filled up in our lovely little Tiger Loop and the heating is now back on. My wife is now incredibly happy again. So if you've got any questions or comments about this, which I'm sure a lot of you will do in the comments below, please do hit the like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Or you can watch this one here, which is brilliant, and all about me drilling a hole through a floor in a toilet. <laughs>